Hello, welcome back. Let's see if this works again. Please give me a sign. I'm going to ask you on, uh, on the chat. Yes, it works, okay. I'm sorry, guys, I don't know what's happening. I, uh, it's probably due to this uh, conflict within, between OBS and Linux, and it's, uh, it's really, really, really bad. Um, I, I will try to fix this next time. But uh, it's strange, because last time it went really, really good without any trouble. But, okay, let's see. Okay, so, about formatting, I hope that you just lost the last couple of seconds. Uh, you can put uh, the text in new lines. Ooh, Bobby says, that's a long message, but for the P, you, can't, you can just use lorem ipsum dollar sit adam kazila blah, 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 blah. Yes, I think we all know the placeholder text. Okay, yeah, why, why not? Um, so, Bobby is suggesting to use the typical lorem ipsum placeholder text. And if you want, you can look at it online. There is also a, there are multiple lorem ipsum generator. This, are, this is a placeholder text that you can just uh, copy and place it to add some, uh, you know, s some space, some occupied space on your, um, on your website. So you can just copy whatever you want. For example, this one, and you put it here. Uh, you know what? I'm going to put it on a second paragraph because I like the fact that it's uh, that new long, long thing. Okay, so this paragraph is really, really long. I don't like it like this. I would like to format it so it stays in the 80, uh, 80 characters, 80 columns. How do I know if they are 80 columns? Well, Visual Studio Code tells you this. As you can see, the caret right now, the cursor, is on line 13, column 72. So we are um, before the 80 column limit. And I like this limit, so let's leave it here. I'm going to put everything on a new line, starting from here. This is very annoying. In fact, luckily, we have some uh, automatic indentators, so some automatic formatters, or some plugins on Visual Studio Code that you can add. But since we are in a learning environment, I'm not going to use them right now. I would like you guys to format everything manually. I'm sorry. But at a certain point, I will tell you a little bit about auto formatters. When I have such a long paragraph in multiple lines, I usually put this line uh, on, 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 on its own line after the P, and I put the P here like this. This gives me more the uh, idea that there's an opening paragraph, there's a block of text, and then a closing paragraph. But this is just a convention. As you can see, you can put new lines wherever you want. I think this is more readable. So I'm going to put it here too. I'm going to put this is a long blah 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 on a new line, on its own line, and then I'm closing the paragraph. In this way, I'm, I know exactly where a paragraph starts and when a paragraph ends. Also, another thing that I like to do is to add some extra new lines just to give air to the tags and separate them better. And I see, I know some people love to add many lines. I don't like this. I know that it gives you uh, more room to breathe, but as for me, it, uh, it forces me to scroll up and down too much. Okay, so usually the convention is don't put more than one new line to separate. It's not worth it. Okay, so these are headings, these are paragraphs. And what can we also learn from here? Well, indenting and spacing. Uh, I probably already told you a little bit about indenting and spacing, and it's exactly what I just told you. So the P tag starts and then I go to a new line, and as you can see, the new line is indented. I could start the new line here, but 
it doesn't look like the text is a child of the paragraph. It looks like it's a brother or a sister, it's a sibling of the paragraph. Instead, I would like to make it clear that the text that I see here, this lore impsum, is a child inside of the paragraph. So I'm going to force this kind of indentation. And also, I don't want to make uh, other indentation mistakes. So let me show you a bad indentation mistake. Okay, let's just put it like this. If I indent things like this, it could kind of look like this paragraph is a child of this one. Because I didn't see that this paragraph is actually closed before I open a new one. Well, you cannot put a paragraph inside a paragraph, so this would be still an error. But still, the wrong indentation is telling me a different story, and I have to inspect a little thoroughly this code in order to understand what the real story is. Instead, if your indentation reflects your intention, then there's no problem. No surprise. Principle of least astonishment. PNTM says, what was the shortcut to shift the indentation left and right? Sorry, but I forgot. I don't know if I told you already, and I expected this question from you, because you're very curious, and I love this. Um, you can just select a whole block of text, and you can use tab to indent more, or shift tab to indent less. So this is the trick that I just used. Okay, so this is all about indentation. Just try to make your indentation consistent. There is only one indentation rule that is not uh, orth orthodox, but it's still uh, welcomed, and it's this. You know that the head and the body are direct children of the HTML tag, but still, you see them sometimes as first-class citizens. You don't see them indented as children of HTML. And why is that? Because, well, we don't want the text to be shifted too much on the right. So we know that head and body are the only two children of HTML, and we keep them like this because it's just more convenient. Um, PNTM says, got it, you mentioned it, but it was a couple of lessons before, thanks. No worries, I'm really happy to rehearse anything you missed. Okay. So, basic tags, you already know them, just let's write them in the proper way. Something about basic formatting, well, the bottom line here is don't use tags for simple formatting. You probably don't know, but there is a tag called B to make text bold. And there's a tag called I to make text italic. There's a, ta there's a tag called U to make the text underlined. And there's a, text, a tag called soup that makes it superscript. So a little, just like the, uh, how do you say, the exponential, right? Uh, there's a sub to make it subscript, and et cetera, et cetera. All these tags were born with HTML. And now they are completely superseded by CSS. Because, wait a second, Bobby, I'm going to reply to you. Um, we don't like to mix the structure of the document with its style. These tags sh uh, alter the style of your document and you want to alter the style using CSS. So my suggestion is know that these tags exist, but just don't use them. We will use some CSS rules in order to achieve the same result and to decouple these two concerns that should be separate, structuring the document and styling the document. So, Bobby says, if the head and body are the only children, then is the footer separate? Um, okay, that's a good question. So, head and body could suggest you that we are structuring the document into a header, a body, and a footer. But this is not the case, not at all. Uh, this is a really unfortunate uh, naming story scheme that was uh, invented some time ago. Head and body have nothing to do with the structure of the document that you see. Head is not the header, body is not the central part of the document. Head is 
what is where you put all the meta tags all the title and all that is not visible and the body is what shows the visible part inside of the body you could have a header a body a footer um, navigation links on the side and whatever you want but all of this should be inside of the body so no footer for now the footer will be inside of the body and uh, just as just like the header or whatever you want to show to the user okay uh, this is a a, 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 a a very common misconception at first so don't worry uh, you want to try one of these tags let's do a b so this is a long and i'm gonna put a b here i'm going to wrap the long word word with the b tag if i do this well i should probably go live and see what happens and if you have the live server already installed as a plugin on visual studio code you should probably be able to right click on this html file and then say open with live server let's see what happens boom as you can see this is a long is bold but you don't want to make it bold like that so i'm going to show you how it works and then never use it again but still it's always a good thing to know things even if you don't if you're not planning to use them because maybe one day you will stumble upon code that was created by someone else that uses these tags so you know that uh, the meaning of the tag you know that that is a bad practice and you can fix that bad practice by turning it into a css rule okay so it's always best to know everything or most things um, we want to use I so I'm going to wrap the very word with I and in this case I really don't like the auto completion that Visual Studio Code provides me um, save it then go back here and now very is in italic okay it's how do you say it? slant okay so we have other things that we can try if you want to try you underline um i'm going to un i'm going to underline all the oh so long so you as underline and here we are let's see if this works yep oh so long but the g seems not underline this is just a styling issue because the g is inside of the u but still okay it's underlined and uh what else do we have here we've got sop and sub which is another thing that I never used in my whole life. Wait, so bolting isn't with strong? That's another good question. And uh, no, um, or yes. Let me let me tell you in a while. Um, so long it is painful. Let's try a sop in painful. And now the painful is superscript. And I'm going to use a sub on please i'm going to try all of these things and you can try them yourselves in your code whatever you you prefer oh my god please and this is subscript okay now bobby already started mentioning an important thing so we now understood that b to make it bold and i to make it italics is not really uh is not really a good practice because bold and italics are styles that you want to apply to your text and you don't want to put these styling um, suggestions on the structure of your document so what you're going to do is instead add some meaning that is um, not tied to the style so one thing that you can do is to use another tag which is called strong and I'm going to use strong over lorem ipsum. And as you can see, strong results exactly like in bold. Strong seems exactly the same thing as bold. And there's another one thing here that we can use, which is M. M stands for emphasize. So I'm going to emphasize just this consectetur. And as you can see, emphasize looks a lot like italics. So these are two uh, pretty new 
and as for new, I'm saying that they are five or ten years old, uh, maybe even more. I don't know. Uh, there are new tags that disjoint the concept of having something bold into having something important. Okay, so you can use these tags, strong and M. I'm gonna show you them again here, strong and M, which result in having them in having the text bold or italic but through CSS you can yourself define how you want to present a strong sentence or an emphasized center, uh, sentence for example you could um, I don't know invert the the two styles you can say that strong should be italics and emphasize should be bold or you can say that strong should be a uh, bigger font size well, emphasize should be in blue. So you are disjointing. You're not saying in the HTML, I want it to be italic. You're just saying, I want to be emphasized somehow. By default, emphasize means italic, but then through styling, you can still say how you want to emphasize some text, okay? So we prefer a little more this strong and M. And yeah, sometimes I use them, um, even though I usually still prefer something else, which is more uh, CSS related. But still, yeah, strong and M are really, really important. Well, as for sub, sub, etc., etc., they are usually not used, especially this underline. You will see that there's a, a CSS property that allows you to underline whatever you want. Okay, so then we've got HR. And you know what an HR is. An HR is a horizontal ruler. So, for example, you want to separate the paragraph and the heading with and the headings with a horizontal ruler. This is one of those tags that auto closes itself. So you don't need to put closing HR. You don't need that. You can either auto close it in the same tag. So it's a, a tag that opens and closes at the same time, or you can. Just keep the closing part, it stays like this. It's the same, in HTML everything is allowed. So let's uh, do it like this, and you will see that the horizontal rule creates this uh, separator that you can style. It's not really easy to style it in a good way. And in fact, this is already another styling thing that I really don't appreciate in an HTML document. If I want a separator, I will probably create a separator in a different way, not with the HR. And also, if I have an HR, why don't I have a VR, a vertical ruler? There's no vertical ruler, because historically, HTML documents were only from top to bottom and there was no way to put one text um, side by side with another except with uh, uh, some strange stuff that I will show you. So there was no need for a horizontal ruler uh, or for a, for a vertical ruler. We just needed a horizontal ruler. And still, I don't. I suggest you not to use horizontal rulers. We'll see how to do things. Uh, nesting of tags. I probably I don't know what this is about, but I'm pretty sure that you already know what is nesting of tags. Let's see. Superscript, subscript, horizontal rule, nesting of tags. Okay, yeah, you know that you can nest tags together, one inside of the other. And here on this tutorial, you will see. Do Italians write in italic by default? <laughs> no, only people from Pisa, because Pisa has the leaning tower. Uh, <laughs> thanks for the joke. So you can nest tags however you want. So for example, this body is nesting a P, a paragraph. And the paragraph is nesting a bold thing, which nests a underline inside of it. Um, just don't do that, because you don't need to do this. This is really bad. This is really uh, difficult to understand. Are you having this text in bold and inside of the bold you are underlining? Okay. And what if I write things like this? Now I'm mixing things up because I'm closing the bold before I'm closing the underline. So here I'm mixing up children and, and parents of tags. So this is really messy. And this is probably one of the, uh, another reason why we don't want to style things in HTML. We want to sell things separately in CSS. Um, okay, this is another situation in which I have B, and then inside of a B, I have a U, 
but then I close B and then I close U. What? What, what happens here? Well, apparently it's, uh, it's working because the B starts and stops here while the underline starts and stops here. But it's really, really difficult to, to, to see, to understand, and we're not going to use this thing. Okay, so that's it. But I wrote some other things. For example, special characters, prey, and this tag, which is really, really important. So I'm going to tell you about these characters now, uh, which are not listed here. So probably it was inside of a, another tutorial uh, page, probably. Yeah, special characters. So Bobby says, so should I make a separate class in CSS for just a word or sentence I want to edit in any way? Sounds like a lot of work. Can I even use class on a string? Okay, um, you're going a little bit ahead because we haven't talked about classes in CSS, but yeah, you're going to use classes and you can apply a class to not a text, but some special tag that wraps the test, which is usually a span. And yes, yeah, seems like a lot of work, but it still allows you to make, to separate concerns and to reuse those CSS rules because any text that has the same class will be formatted in the same way. So you will see it's much more convenient to still use CSS classes. But before CSS classes, let's finish off with, the, with this uh, HTML thing. Uh, so we've got special characters. What are these special characters? Well, we've got some uh, cool characters that we can use. For example, well, the less than and the greater than symbol. And I, if I want to to type it here, I can say in a paragraph, I want to say that, you know, JavaScript is much better than C Sharp. Sorry, C Sharp users. I don't want to say that JavaScript is better than C Sharp, but I need to tell, you know what? I'm going to use something else. Um, what is a bad language? You know what? PHP. I don't care, PHP users. Don't stop typing PHP. It's, it's bad. Just type something else. Okay. so. Can I use the greater than symbol like this? Probably yes, probably not. Oh, it works. It works, but it wasn't supposed to work. And what about the less than symbol? If I say that PHP is worse than, than C Sharp. These are programming languages, if you don't know them. Okay, it still works, because apparently browsers nowadays have become a little more resilient, but in earlier days, we couldn't use these characters because these characters are already used to open and close tags. So a safer way to type these less than and greater than symbols is through the use of the so-called, I'm going to type it here, HTML entities. Okay, so I'm going to type an H2 in which I say HTML entities and I'm going to show you what HTML entities are. Okay, so we're going to, we are using properly HTML tags to separate different sections. And you know what? I'm going to use the HR, the ruler here, because it separates two different sections. Just, just to fiddle around with the code. This is the result. So this is a heading. And you know what? I'm going to call it uh, HTML tags, which is the proper title for this. And, and here I'm going to say basic tags. So this is one section. Okay, this seems a little proper. HTML tags is the name of the whole page. Then basic tags with the basic tags that we already experimented with. And then we've got another section, HTML entities, in which I'm going to describe HTML entities to you. So what are HTML entities? Well, wherever, whenever you need to specify a special characters, for example, a less than symbol, greater than symbol, or even stranger symbols, such as those that you can see here, the, look at that, we even got card symbols. Uh, I don't know how you call those. Card, uh, card? Ah, I don't remember. Anyway, um, card signs, card symbols. Please, some English speaker, can you tell? Can you help me and uh, remember which which name you use for the card symbols? Just to boost some interactivity with you guys. Card figures, card I don't know. Oh, let, 
I, I don't care. Um, if someone wants to type it, then that's fine. Uh, well, there is a, a convention called HTML Entities, which allows you to type it, type any special characters like this. You can start with an ampersand symbol, then a special name that describes that symbol, and then you end it with a semicolon. So, for example, this is the clubs symbol, and you can and you can type ampersand clubs semicolon or every special symbol has a code number so the code number for this symbol is 9827 so you can type ampersand hash or pound symbol and then the number 9827 and finally semicolon how do I know that this is called clubs or 9827 because it's written here below I didn't know it by heart Ah, oh, suits. Thanks a lot, Bobby. Yeah, suits. They are card suits. So this is the special card suit called clubs, and I can call it clubs, or I can use the number 9827 if I know it. How do I know it? Well, there are so many tables out there that tell you. If I look at HTML entities, uh, the first result that I see comes from W3Schools, and it probably has a table of the main HTML entities. And you can see them here. Uh, you can create the less than symbol, the greater than symbol, the ampersand itself, or the register trademark, the pound, the yen, the euro. Not the dollar, because the dollar, you find it on the keyboard, it's pretty easy. And uh, it, it doesn't need any... Uh, any HTML entity to, to, make it, uh, to, to make it visible because all of this is probably created in this state. So dollar is the best thing around. Um, you can combine things uh, with characters and you can see how you can combine a character with uh, accents. Okay, I've got a friend of mine who is reaching out to me. He suffered from coronavirus, unfortunately. So a few days ago, I asked him, hey, how's it going now? And uh, I hope that he's well. Uh, but after the lessons. Um, so, these are HTML entities, and you can find any kind of crazy HTML entity. You can find mathematical symbols, you can find Greek letters. Okay, he's still isolated. You can find suits, card suits. Here they are. Spades, clubs, hearts, and diamonds. He's angry with the doctor. <laughs> I have to ask Mohammed, please don't, don't type anything right now. Or I can just, uh, yeah, quit Slack for now. Um, you can even put emojis recently. If you use a special char set, UTF-8, which is a char set that we are using right now, UTF-8 is a set of characters that allows for lots of different characters, um, including emojis. There are other char sets that, are, that do not include emojis because they are smaller tables of, char of characters. So... Yeah, apparently you can even add emojis by knowing the, the number associated to that emoji. So, for example, you say ampersand, hash symbol, number, and you uh, finish with semicolon, and you will probably see an emoji. And here is a list of the main emojis, but if you want a full list, you can just check it here, apparently. I'm going to use this emoji here. So, let's put a... This is a green, oh, a green emoji. Here it is. Let's see if it works. Basic tags. No, it didn't work. Oh, wait a second. I need an ampersand, a beginning ampersand. As you can see, Visual Studio Code understands uh, HTML entities, and in fact, it uh, visualizes them with a different color, with this kind of uh, orangish brownish color. So, you start with an ampersand, you always close with a semicolon, and then here you write the code name of that symbol or the number associated with it with a hash in front of it. All the 9gag community disapproves this act, says Bobby, because on 9gag we say that emojis give cancer, so never use emoji. It's uh, an inside joke that we have as 9gaggers, but outside of 9gag we are going to use them. Um, we, you are using emojis on the chat already, so, uh, but you're right. Sorry, nine gaggers, I'm going to use emojis sometimes here. 
Um, okay, so this is a green emoji and it just works. Uh, sh shall we try clubs? This is a clubs um, HTML entity. And I'm going to say uh, ampersand clubs and then I close with a semicolon. As you can see, the IntelliSense of Visual Studio Code is already suggesting me things. For example, there's also a club suit, suit, suit club suit. Uh, you are playing with fire using emojis, I know. Uh, <laughs> let's try club suit. I don't know what this is. Okay, it's a club. And uh, probably they are synonym. Yeah, they are. Uh, probably they are exactly the same. So, okay, we can look at HTML entities like this, with a name or with the numbers, okay? And you can have a look at all the different HTML entities you like. I don't even know what this is. Looks like the shape of Japan. What, what is this? Is this Japan? Is this Japan? It's really strange if they have an emoji that shows the island of Japan. What? It, it looks like, right? How is Japan? What's the shape of Japan? I think it's Japan. Not really sure about that. Not using semicolon at the end also works. Really? So you tried removing the semicolon and it still works. It's true, but as you can see, it's not recognized by the editor as an HTML entity, and it's quite risky. So this is uh, the browser's feature that, uh, the, the resilience that allows you to make mistakes and get, uh, get on with it. Um, although it might be wrong. Yeah, PMTM, I think it is still wrong if you remove the semicolon. It could lead you to strange uh, behaviors, for example, uh, GTE will, means greater than or equals and in this case you see this is not really working but if I put a semicolon it's not even working um, isn't this like greater than or equal GT oh my oh maybe it's GTEC no, it's GE, sorry. Okay, GE is greater than or equal. I'm sorry, I, don't rem I didn't remember this. And if I remove the semicolon, yeah, it still works, but still it could be misleading and it could, uh, uh, you could incur into some errors. And I, want to say, I don't want to say that Japan is greater than or equal than anything, so I'm going to remove this. Okay, apparently, I don't know if, the, if it's true that we have a Japan emoji. Japan emoji. No, <laughs> no, flag of Japan. Okay, I have no, okay, map of Japan. Yep. We've got an emoji, which is the mount, the map of Japan. I, I, I can't believe this. Uh, I, I'm curious about the fact that maybe we have other maps available, maybe. If there's a map of Italy, I will definitely use it. No, there isn't. Okay. Probably because emojis were invented, created in Japan. So probably they have this extra, this extra feature. And um, you know what? Another emoji that I care about is the Italian gesture. Can we now use the Italian gesture emoji? Italian hand Ooh, pinched fingers emoji tap to copy but if I copy it I probably Italian programming be like here it is I can put the emoji itself on the editor and it probably just works yep but if I want to make it a little more resilient and make it um, work in any kind of situation, I should probably 
get the HTML entity for this uh, emoji finger, uh, emoji hand. Is that the gesture usually footballers do when they complain to the ref? Yes, and not only. Um, small lesson about the Italian gesture. You probably know this, but this is a question mark. And, uh, well, it's an angry question mark usually, or it's just a vehement uh, question mark. So you use this to say, hey, what are you doing? Where are you going? Hey, what the hell? What? Or if you use both hands, it's more like a WTF. So what WTF are you doing? What? Okay, so yeah, we usually program like this because we don't know what we are doing. So every time you're, we're doing, hey, what the... But uh, yeah, this is, the, this is just the Italian question mark. And you can use it for anything, especially if you are, uh, if you have an emotional, um, if you want to give it emotion to, to, to your question. So what are you doing is fine, but what are you doing is more like, uh, is more vehement. Um, so let me check. Uh, so it's called pinch fingers emoji, pinched fingers emoji HTML entity. I would like to know exactly the the code, the, the HTML code of this. And here it is. I can see that the HTML emoji can be described by this number, 129292. I copy this HTML entity, I put it here, and it should work right away out of the box. Is it true? Yes, it is. Okay, so now we know how to create the question mark. So we can say, does it does it work and i'm putting the italian question mark right away okay so this is how italians write the question mark not really we use the proper question mark but in this case we can uh, we can joke around about it okay html entities i think we've got it and um, we also have got the prey tag which can be useful for debugging especially Prey, oops, wait a second. Prey is a tag that allows you to write pre-formatted text, which means that any text, any text that you type here is pre-formatted. What? Well, it just means that whatever you type is, is shown exactly like you wrote it. So this is a good way, for example, to show some code or uh, just to show text like you would like to, to show. As you can see, it also uses a different font. This is one of those fonts in which every single character takes exactly the same amount of space as every other character. So this is the typical font that we use in programming. Uh, a monospace font in which every character, even spaces, has the same width and the same height, actually, as any other character. And this way it is really easy to format things and place them exactly where you want, just like with programming. Uh, there's also actually a code tag, as far as I know. And here we can write some code, but also not just like in this case, I didn't write any code, but I can still type some code and probably the code tag has some extra features that I don't know about. The HTML button co uh, tag defines a clickable button, background color code. So what's the difference between code and pre? The code tag is used to define a piece of computer code. The content inside is displayed in the browser's default monospace font, which we know already. Tip, this tag is not deprecated. However, it is possible to achieve richer effect by using CSS, as always. If we want better, better styling, we want to go with CSS, not with the tags. While pre, this is just pre-formatted text that is not for code itself. The pre tag defines pre-formatted text. Text in a pre element is displayed in a fixed width font just like code, and the text preserves both spaces and line breaks. The text will be displayed exactly as written in the HTML source code. Also look at code again. <laughs> and uh, okay, it's supported by everyone and everything, and we don't really, really care about this. So we've got these 
uh, alternatives, pre, etc. But the last tag that I want to show you before going to coffee break is this tag, which is pretty particular because it's uh, a little harder harder to to write. So you start with a with a less than symbol, and you start with an exclamation mark, and then two dashes. And you already see that Visual Studio Code is showing it differently. This is a comment. Comments are really, really important in every kind of programming languages because with comments you can type whatever you want and the comment will not be processed by the interpreter or the browser, by your computer. So this is code that you just write for yourselves. And this is a comment. You can type comments to describe better what the piece of code uh, is doing. We will talk extensively about comments, the need of, for comments or the lack of need for comments. But another thing that you can do with comments is to comment out code. So for example, you can create a paragraph that says this is temporary. So now this code will be shown in the page. In fact, I can see it here. But you know what? For now, I just want to remove it. But I don't want to lose the code. I just want it not to be shown. So in this case, I can wrap this code inside of a comment with or without spaces. I prefer to put spaces because I it, it, it shows better. And this is the practice of commenting out code, which means that you are wrapping the code inside of a comment, which makes it not processed by the browser or the interpreter, but it's still visible to you. So one day, if you want to remove the comment, you will still have the comment available to you, okay? And usually there is a shortcut in order to toggle commenting and not commenting and every operating system has its different shortcut as far as i know you can use something like control slash or command slash but in my case on linux it's not that easy or on windows it probably is also for italians at least control accented u um, i think that i have to do something like control shift 7 which in my case is a slash and in this case you will see that with this combination i'm commenting out and removing the comment for, from this code. So you can try yourself and uh, find the, your shortcut because it's really, really convenient to know it. If you don't find your, your shortcut, you can always do use the command palette. So you can do command shift P or control shift P and you can type com comment and you probably find something like, you know, add line comment, full, I don't know, toggle block comment, is control shift a and this is what i'm doing Con toggle line comment control shift 7 in my case but i can try also con control shift a and see what happens control shift a oh okay and what if i do this oh okay it's uh, commenting everything as you can see now i've got an something strange happening because a comment inside of a comment doesn't really work so watch out, don't try to put a comment inside a comment, just try to place comments one beside the other. And now we're going to have a coffee break, so see you in 15 minutes, which means 12, 17 for me, or I don't know in your case, and have a good coffee, see you in a while, bye.